Hi everyone, it's Valerie from Stampin' with Valerie. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I wanted to share with you a fun card today and actually a Halloween card that I'm gonna be making. Now, I've got three different stamp sets here but the funny thing is, is I'm only using one stamp out of each one. I know that sounds crazy but that's what I'm doing. I'm part of the Blogging Friends um, blog hop today and our theme is it was a dark and stormy night so I thought from the coming home stamp set I need this bear tree because we need some bear trees in the background for our dark and stormy night and then I wanted <laughs> a little fruit fly just flew by um, I wanted these little bats because I think they're perfect for the dark and stormy night from the festive post stamp set and for my sentiment I'm going to be using happy haunting and for the rest of the card I used the dies from the coming home bundle and I will show you everything that I have cut out here. Um, I have a piece of misty moonlight because I figured that was a perfect color and that little fruit fly is just gonna keep coming in here just to torment me. Look at him, little stinker. All right, <laughs> so now that hopefully he's gone, maybe. So a die cut, I used the machine and die cut some of these um, fancy little landscape hills. And then there were trees on a couple of them and I just trimmed off what I didn't want. So originally this had three trees on this side, two on this side. And so for this layer, I just cut off the two trees on the right, two of them on the left. I cut off one tree on the left here. And then we're just gonna layer these to make our landscape. And then I have a bunch of trees cut out I have a bunch of these little houses and what I'm gonna do is because we don't I don't want those hearts on there we're just gonna layer over with the other little house so we have some different roof peaks and things like that and then we have this one as well and I'm gonna do the same I'm just not gonna use that star we're just gonna layer over so we have like a little 3d house so to speak or 2d I guess it would be I don't know so I'm just gonna set those aside to start with. There's one of the little trees that I cut off and I want to stamp in basic black ink onto my um, basic gray trees here. And now I could have stamped them and then cut them out, but I have found with this particular die, I'm better at stamping it after it's already cut out. I know that sounds silly, but it really is true. I'm able to line it up better and that could just be me, and maybe my die is just moving around because I don't have my magnetic plate on my trimmer. But look, I actually am much closer than if I try to die cut it first. Or stamp it first and then die cut it, sorry. Of course, this one I totally went, oh, not too bad, actually. They're all pretty good. Those are, I think those are pretty good for stamping on that small of a little piece. So I might not use all of these trees, but I figure it's better to have them and not use them than to not have them and want them. So I'm just gonna set these all off to the side and we're gonna start with some sponging. Now, sponging is one of those things that takes a lot of practice and personally, I'm gonna, I need a little bit more practice. Every time I do it, I get a little bit better. And I'm even starting to try using um, glycerin with my ink, but today I'm not gonna use glycerin because I just wanna stamp or sponge <laughs> onto my Whisper White card base and onto that misty moonlight. We're not, I'm not gonna do any sponging on the basic gray or the black, which would really wouldn't show anything anyway. So the first thing we're going to need is, I'm gonna use probably just a little bit of Cajun Craze I'm gonna use some crushed curry. And I'm gonna start with those. I'm gonna start with crushed curry. And I always like to start off the card. Now this whole card is gonna be covered other than the little moon that I'm putting on here. So I'm just gonna sponge quite a big area because that way I know I've got, depending on where I decide to put the actual moon, I've got options. And then we've got our Cajun Craze just to add a little bit of darker color to it toward the top. Now, since this is supposed to be a dark and stormy night, I'm actually gonna go over this also 
with some misty moonlight and I know that sounds a little bit crazy but the color blending really makes a wonderful color pattern on here or a, I don't know what you want to call it color pattern color blend but it really does help it makes a good color blend on there because you know when it's a stormy night sometimes you can still see the moon and it's still got some of those oranges and blues and yellows and everything in there because even though it's stormy the moon is usually still shining unless there's super dark clouds hanging over it so I actually kind of like this spot right here so I'm gonna set this over that and I'm gonna pick it out probably about right here I'm gonna use my one inch circle punch and I'm just gonna punch that out and now I kind of like that so now I'm gonna take and put just a little bit more. Of that misty moonlight on there and move that to the side and then we can start sponging on here. So I'm going to sponge mostly misty moonlight on this piece. Because we're going to go kind of up and around because this is our sky piece of our landscape. And I always like to use little circles. I don't know how you do your sponging um, for me. If I do the small circles and obviously start off from my paper first, I don't end up with these splotches as much, which is really helpful. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit to make this piece just a little bit darker. And I'm gonna go around that moon circle just a little bit extra. But then just to let a little bit of that moonlight show through, I'll use a little bit of crushed curry around that moon. So it will just add a little bit of a glow, as you can see on that, on the cardstock, but not so much that it's like, oh, okay, it's just a nice bright night with all the stars out type of night. So let's layer this back over and just see how it looks. I think I might need to put just a little bit more misty moonlight over that moon area just to make it just a little bit darker but still have just a tiny bit of that orange peeking through I think that's perfect what do you think I think I kind of like it now of course again I'm not a perfect sponger but this is something I really like to practice and like to try so hopefully this will give you some ideas of things that you may want to do as well so I'm just going to close these inks up really quick so I don't end up with more ink on my fingers than I already have gotten on there today. <laughs> and then just grab that Memento ink. So the Memento ink is fantastic because obviously just that black. What I wanna do is I wanna have a tree kind of going over this, the moon. So, I'm just going to stamp really light a little bit onto that moon right there just so I can see where the tree needs to be and then I'm going to line that up as best I can and hopefully I need to stand up or I'm going to put my face right in the camera and you're going to see the top of my head. I did it! Yay! So now when I put this back over, I already have that tree trunk. I know that's, oh, and I moved it over just a little too far. Oh no, I didn't. There we go, perfect. I still have that tree kind of going over the moon that was stamped, so it worked out perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this piece down to the card. Now you can use whatever adhesive that you prefer I'm going to use my Stamp and Seal Plus. If you have some Tombow multi-purpose glue, that is perfect as well. And when I'm doing layering cards like this, I always think, you know what, if at the end some of my pieces are a little bit crooked, I can put it in the paper trimmer and trim those off a little bit. So then I don't have, I'm going to go around that moon too, just so it doesn't lift up. So like when I line this tree trunk up, 
there's a little piece of adhesive sticking out. I'm gonna fold that back. When I line the tree trunk up, if I didn't quite get it exactly where I want it and my edge is hanging over, I would just cut that off. But I don't have to because it, it worked out perfectly for me that time. Not bragging, it's just how it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> because trust me, most of the time, it would not work out for me that well. I would end up with something going the wrong way or hanging off the edge or whatever. All right, so I want this to be my top layer because I want those trees kind of shadowing in the back, I guess you'd call it. But I also want to stamp a couple more trees in this background with memento, but I just want to see exactly where I want them. So I really do want one over here to the left. So I'm going to put one right there. And then I lay this back down and then I can see, maybe we'll put one right there. Kind of right there, a little bit taller. Well, I thought I was getting taller, but I didn't. And then we'll put one right here on the edge, actually definitely taller. We'll make that one go up just a little bit. So now we got that awesome background. Doesn't that look fantastic? I love that. That is kind of spooky. Now I guess I could have done all black for my layers, but I thought I would change it up and do some smoky slate in between just so you can see the different layers. So we'll take this layer and adhere it down. Oops. And again, whatever adhesive you wanna do. Now, I'm not gonna adhere those little trees down. I kind of like that they kind of stick up just a little bit on their own. Make sure I get this lined up on each side the best I can. Ta-da! I love that background. That looks fantastic. I love the way that little moon is kind of shining. And it makes me wish I had something to do like for rain since it's supposed to be a dark and stormy night. Mine's just gonna be more of a dark night, I think. <laughs> Not really a stormy night so much because I'm gonna add some bats in there. I'm going to add some more trees and our houses, but it's still gonna be adorable. So line up one side, make sure the second side is lined up and then just stick it down. And then we've got this one. This one's gonna go just a little bit higher on this side, so it's gonna cover part of that um, smoky slate, or basic gray piece, sorry, basic gray piece, which is fine. But before I put this layer on, I actually wanna add a couple of our houses in. So I haven't stuck the houses together, so I probably should do that. And I am gonna use glue for this, just because with these stars and the heart punch outs. I'm just gonna go around those with a little bit of Tombow glue. I'm gonna save those stars and hearts because I could use them for something else. I always try to save little pieces because you never know when you're gonna need those little pieces. I actually have a little bucket back here. I say bucket, but a little tray that I just have full of little pieces. So whenever I need something, I can always look in there and pick something. So that's, and that's definitely, a. That pumpkin would be perfect if it was smaller, you know, but anyway, that's what you, having those little buckets and things are just a good idea. All right, so grab your Tombow. Just put a few little dots of glue around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just a couple little dots, just enough to hold them together. Because once it sticks on there, it's gonna, that glue is gonna spread a little bit anyway. Just stick your little house together. And I'm just gonna set a block on that so it can dry. And I'll probably do the same with this one. Just set one of my little blocks on there. And I actually have a little extra one so we can do one that is just, if we put all of them on there. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna put all of them on there. It might be too much, but we're gonna find out in just a second put one more block on that and then we have one extra just plain one if we want it. All right so this first one I'm thinking kind of right here maybe and I don't want to put all of them on dimensionals because they kind of have a little bit of a, that 3D because they're double layered anyway so I'm just going to put 
some Tombow on the back of that to glue that down. And we're gonna have to have put our sentiment on here somewhere too, so I don't want, that's actually a little higher than I planned on, right there. Perfect. And I'm thinking I'll put the sentiment over here, so I don't wanna put any houses right here. And we've got another little house. Let's try one of these ones. Now it's a debate, do I wanna put it Actually, I will do that. I'm going to add this one here. We're gonna put this piece down first. So we'll go ahead and put this other black layer because it just, just need a little bit more dimension right there. This is gonna be a really thick card. So because all these layers, even though they're cut into pieces, it's just layer upon layer upon layer. All right, there we go. Got that third layer. And then our fourth layer is gonna go right here. And actually, now that I see that, I've got my little tree here. So maybe my sentiment will go on this side or I'll chop that little tree off, one or the other. Cause we can always add that little tree somewhere else. And we've got all of these other little trees to fit in as well, these gray ones. We can have them kind of going over the moon a little bit too, next to the house. We could even have a house in front of a house because that kind of, you know, we could use the dimensionals for that. I think we'll put one here. Yeah, I think I will cut this little tree off and we're just gonna put our sentiment over there so we don't need that little tree. We can add it in somewhere else if we decide we want it. Got that little curly cue from when I showed you everything that was in my little bucket. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down too, just so it's there and we don't have to worry about it. We can just start finishing our layering. So I hope you are all having a great week. I know it's already Friday, so can you believe it's October already? I am actually kind of a little in shock about that still. I can see that house is a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna straighten it out. Well, I thought it was crooked. There we go. It probably wasn't crooked, it was probably just my eyeballs. All right, this one I'm gonna do flat again, and then the next one I'm gonna use some dimensionals on. Uh, and now because that's on this other layer, it's still got a little bit of dimension there you can see in between the layers there. Now, because this is black, I'm gonna use some black dimensionals. If you haven't bought the black dimensionals, they're fantastic because they are black foam. So when you have them on a dark card like this, it hides those dimensionals. No one, you know, people can't see that you have, um, well, I mean, they can see them, but it's not like if you have a white one, let's put it that way. And I just stuck that on there a little too close to the edge and it's hanging off. So I'm gonna have to peel that. Ah, ripped my paper. Good thing that's on the back, right? Do you ever do that? Like stick something down and then you've got it in the wrong spot and you're just like, oh no, I've got to start over. I do it all the time. It's one of those things that just happens. So I try not to stress about it too much. All right, so there's that one. We're gonna put a tree right here and I'm just gonna glue the trunk of this tree down so the top of it can kind of poke up a little bit, if that makes sense. So it kind of gives it a little bit of dimension without having to put dimensionals on the back of it. Then we've got another house we can put here. And I kind of put that on crooked, so I'm gonna cut this little piece right here so it doesn't look so crooked. This one's probably gonna need dimensionals and probably, I don't even know if we want any more houses. I think we need another tree here. Or here. <laughs> 
<laughs> somewhere we need another tree, right? I've got all these trees cut. Let's throw them in there. Let's do that one right there. And it'll kind of sit underneath just the edge of that layer. And then once that glue dries, it'll be clear. But then it kind of goes over that moon a little bit too. I'm gonna wipe that up a little bit with my finger just so it's not as much on there. Cute. All right. Now here my housing situation is a little odd, but all right, let's just put a tree here. That'll work. And this one I'm gonna put dimensionals on. So I'm gonna actually trim a little strip for the tree trunk because if you don't hook that tree trunk down when you go to put it in the envelope, it could get smashed or twisted or you know, whatever. And again, because these dimensionals are black, if a little piece shows, it's not gonna matter. I'm gonna try, I'm trying to find my mini ones. All right, so when you order the black dimensionals, you get two sheets of mini and two sheets of the regular size. So it's perfect, it's like a little mixed pack. I love it. So I'm gonna actually, let's kind of hook that tree right to that house because it gives it a little bit something right there. And then we can stick this other tree next to it. So then that looks like that's growing right in front of that house. This is kind of next to it a little bit. Perfect. Like I said, it's going to be a thick card, but it's going to be adorable. And then we've got a regular little house we can put here. And all we need for that is just a couple of dimensionals on the back. Then we're going to stamp some bats up in the sky a little bit. I want that kind of just behind the edge of that tree too. And then this one can go right here. And instead of putting dimensionals on the back of that one, I'm just going to put them right here so I know that I'm not going to be on the edge of the other house or something when I stick it down. That way my dimensionals are right where I want them. And Perfect. There, and my houses are all kind of clustered toward the middle, but that's okay, that's where we're leaving them. We've got two more trees. Since my sentiment is going here, we'll put these other trees over here. And again, I kind of like it when it's kind of hooked to the, to the house a little bit, but I don't want it right on the house. So I'm gonna put this one just kind of right there. And then this one we'll do dimensionals again. So we'll do that again. We'll just do another little strip for the trunk and then use a mini dimensional at the top of it and it will be perfect. So I hope you give this card a try. It's a very fun little card. It takes a little bit of work as you can see, but now that you kind of have an idea of maybe where to place things and maybe you already know, hey, I'm not gonna place my houses the way Valerie did. I'm gonna do something completely different. You already have an idea in your head where I was kind of going into this a little bit blindly. Um, the only th real idea I had in my head was that it was gonna just have lots of little trees. Oh my goodness, I didn't do a dimensional at the top of it. I'm like, why is it not sticking? Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> You're probably all yelling, yelling at your screen. Um, hello, you forgot the dimensional. If only I could hear you, that would be fantastic. All right, so there's that. Let's stamp a couple of, ooh, we still have one more tree if we wanna add it. Actually two, we've got that little, and there's a little gray tree here somewhere. I'm just gonna grab the memento, and I'm just gonna stamp a couple of bats at the top. And I think that's plenty. I think that works. Since we've already got the tree going across the moon, I'm not gonna add any bats over the moon because we don't wanna cover the entire moon. And then we can start with a piece of that gorgeous 
gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Misty Moonlight. And then I'm gonna take just what's left on this sponge that's already on there and kind of sponge around the edges just a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. You can see it makes it just a little bit darker. And of course, if I inked it up a little more, it would be even darker, but I'm just gonna use what's left on that sponge from earlier. Then we're gonna stamp Happy Haunting. That is, this is from the Banner Year stamp set. We'll stamp Happy Haunting right in the center. And then I know we don't sell the one and three quarter inch punch, but I this was a one and a half inch punch. We do sell that one. So if you have a one and three quarter inch punch, or even if you have a two inch punch, you could use a two inch punch. I've got a piece of vellum and I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna go around that edge just a little bit. And you can really tell this is already starting to dry because it's not even hardly putting any color on there, but it is a little bit. So we're just gonna go with that. When you lay it down, you can see it. Gonna adhere these two together, put a dimensional on the back. And again, I'm still gonna use a black dimensional because that's what I have out. Of course I say that's what I have out and all I see are my mini ones sitting here. They're probably right in front of my face, ladies and gentlemen. I do just, aha, yes they were. <laughs> they were right there. And as usual, I'm gonna make my little triangle. I always do a little triangle on the back of my circle. And I try to mention that every time just so people can see. Now you could put just one dimensional in the middle, that's fine. I don't like the way it kind of wobbles when you do that. So I think the way I placed my house has actually worked out kind of perfect for this, except for that dimensional right there. It's kind of going on that edge. So what I need to do is just put that right there so I know it's not touching, touching my house and it won't be on top of it getting too tall. Got my little happy haunting, which is super cute. I feel like it needs a little piece of ribbon or something on there maybe. Let's see what we've got. I do have the sparkly organdy ribbon, which I actually have just a piece here that can come off from there. We could just do a little double loop thing maybe. We'll see how it looks. If I don't use it for this, I'll use it for something else. And I just staple it after I make those two little loops. Just trim it off. And just kind of put it underneath your little thing. Or we could, and we could also add even a couple longer pieces with some little diagonal cut ends, which I probably should have did the opposite. There we go, one can be longer, one can be shorter. Let's see. I don't know if it really needs that much. Let's see how just those look. I actually kind of like it with just those. So I'm gonna use those and I'm gonna hook those in with some glue dots, which are perfect. I'm gonna put a glue dot on that one, glue dot on this one. I'm gonna rip this one, whoops. I'm gonna rip this one up and put them together, but the glue dot didn't come with it. And then I'm just gonna add one more glue dot just to make sure it's good and sticky. Then use your take your pick tool because you gotta kind of lift this up just a little bit to get it under there. And then that kind of fills in a little bit of that space there where we were missing something. Got one more little tree. I feel like he needs to be on there, but I'm not sure where I would put him. I don't know if that's too much if I stick him back there. I don't wanna cover my bats. Let's see. Yeah, let's just put him right there. And then I feel like I've put enough trees on here, right? <laughs> We've only got, you know, a dozen trees on here. What's one more? All right, come on glue. There we go. After you let it sit upright for a while, it doesn't wanna come back out. Perfect, yay! I love this little card. 
It's so adorable. I don't know what you think. I hope you like it. I think it's fantastic. Look at that. Super pretty. And I want to tell you about, and I don't have my flyer in front of me. Hang on one second. Let me grab my flyer. There is a fantastic sale. Getting ready to, or actually it started today. Starting today, it is a designer series paper sale. So if you want to stock up on designer series paper, which I didn't use any on here, which that probably would have been a great advertisement, right? Um, there are a lot of varieties on sale. I'm just going to flip this over so you can see how many. I mean, if you just go to valeriesmith.stampinup.net, you can check out all of the designer series papers that are on sale. Um, I truly appreciate that you have chosen me as your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I know there are a lot of choices out there. I know there are a lot of demonstrators and it really means the world to me that you have chosen me. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you go and check out this designer series paper sale. This month is also my birthday month and I am giving away a Stamparatus. So for every $30 order, you get one entry into the Stamparatus drawing, which I'm gonna hold on November 1st. And every, so like if you do 30, you get one entry. If you do 60, you get two entries. So go ahead and stock up on designer series paper and get yourself some entries into my Stamparatus drawing because I really hope you are the winner. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great day. Bye.